Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 2.2, find slope and rate of change. So our learning targets for today, I can calculate the slope of a line from two points. I can determine what a line will look like from the slope. I can define parallel and perpendicular. I can determine if two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither using their slope. And I can determine which line is steeper based on their slopes. So again, slope, and when we talk about a definition of slope, people are always like, oh, it's change, you know, rise over run or blah, blah, blah. You know, those are formulas. How do you calculate it? Your slope is simply your rate of change. How does one thing change as the other one do? So this is change in Y over change in X. And so you'll see in math, we use the Greek letter delta. It looks like a triangle to represent change. So change in X over change, sorry, change in Y over change in X. So when you're looking at a graph, you can simply count rise over run. So you count the rise, which is the difference in the Y values, over the run, which is the difference in the X values. And so a way to remember this is you need to rise before you can run. Again, I'll repeat that. You need to rise y values before you can run x values. All right, so when we look at a word problem like this, it says a skateboard ramp has a rise of 15 inches and a run of 54 inches, as shown in the diagram. What is the slope of the ramp? So our slope is equal to our rise, which in this problem it says it is 15 inches and a run of 54. Now, the reason I wrote the units on here is because these units need to match and thus need to cancel. I have seen many times on like some type of a standardized test where they give you a problem and the units are different. So like the rise is 15 inches or 12 inches or whatever, and the run is four feet. So people go, oh, 12 over four, that the slope is three. It doesn't work that way. You need to have the same units, and that's why we make sure our units cancel. And then, so again, we need to reduce the fraction, 15 over 54. Using our calculator, we get five over 18. And you'll notice that slope doesn't have units on there because it doesn't matter whether we're inches, miles, feet, yards, centimeters, millimeters, the unit doesn't really matter because for every five units of rise, no matter what our unit is, we are going to have 18 units of run. Whether it's in feet or inches or millimeters, it doesn't matter. All right. Find the slope of a line passing through the given points. If it helps you to label the points x1, y1, and x2, y2, by all means, you can do that. And then so you're going to use the slope formula, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So again, our y2 is 2, our x, sorry, our y2 is negative 1, my apologies, and y1 is 3, x2 is 2, and x1 is negative 1. So you will notice that I wrote the double negative. That is my recommendation to you. You can come back in the second part. So we go negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, 2 minus a negative 1, so a double negative becomes plus, 2 plus 1 is 3. And again, the one thing you need to always check because we are dealing with fractions is does my fraction reduce? And B, I cannot leave a negative in the denominator. So I'd have to kick that negative to the numerator. Or if it's two negatives, make it a positive. But in this case, we don't have that. So we get our answer is negative four thirds. I would like you to pause the video, try each of these two and check back. All right, so hopefully on the middle one you got 5 over 4. And on the last one, again, if you want to, you know, do it that way, 2 minus a negative 4. I like to write the minus the negative so that I make sure I'm copying this 
the negatives correctly and that I am subtracting correctly. So you get 6 over negative 6, which reduces to be negative 1. All right. Now that we've talked about calculating slope, we're going to talk about the four classifications or types of slope. So the first type of slope is what we call positive. The graph is going up from left to right. And then on the downside of that, when the graph is going down from left to right, we say that the slope is negative. Those two are pretty straightforward. The next type of slope we have is when we have a horizontal line. And these are always going to be in the form y equals some type of a number. And so this one could be like y equals 5. Now, the question is here is what is the slope? Well, if I think about slope being rise over run, how much does this one rise as it goes straight across? The answer to that is it doesn't. There is zero rise because it has the same y value. So we say the slope of this line is zero. It rises zero divided by whatever run you have. So that's always going to be zero divided by something, which is just zero. All right, the last one is when we have a vertical line. And again, this is going to be whenever it's x equals a number. This one, when I look at it, it has rise. It does go up and down, but it doesn't go across. Well, so what we say is it has no run. So I'm taking a number divided by 0. And so if you put that in your calculator, say 5 divided by 0 once, and you hit enter, and it pops up with an error message. And you're like, what the heck is with this? There's an error message. Well, that's because you cannot divide by zero. It's one of those, what we call the commandments of math. Thou shall not divide by zero. And so what happens is this is what's called undefined. Okay, because we cannot divide by zero. Now, one thing you'll notice, the option no slope is does not exist. There is not such a thing as no slope. If it's horizontal, the slope is zero. If it's vertical, it's undefined. If you use the term no slope, automatically incorrect because that is not a valid option. All right, another thing that can save us some time is when we recognize these vertical and horizontal lines. So if I look here, I will notice that both of those have a y value of one. So my numerator would be 1 minus 1, or I can just say y equals 1. And since it's a y equals, since it's y equals, we know that the slope is going to be 0. Likewise, on this next one, we recognize they have the same x, which means it's going to be 4 minus 4 in my denominator, which just means it's going to be a number divided by 0. Or we can just say that this is x equals 4, the line x equals 4, which means it is undefined. Again, that's only if you recognize that the x values or the y values are matching. If you don't recognize that they're matching, the only thing you can do is use your slope formula and actually calculate them. All right, our next definition is parallel lines. And these are coplanar lines that do not intersect. Which mean, and so that means they won't cross each other. Why won't they cross each other? And this is the part that we need. They have the same slope. And again, that's the big part for us. The whole coplanar lines that do not intersect, that's your geometry definition. You'll talk about that. You'll see sometimes when they're parallel lines that have like a double arrow drawn on them showing that they're parallel. And again, that's going to be more geometry. 
but for what we need to know, parallel lines have the same slope. And you may see this symbol for parallel, those two backslashes. We're not going to use it much, but if you do see it, that's what it is. Perpendicular to the symbol is an upside down T. Uh, these are lines that intersect at right angles. which you might remember means 90 degrees. What we need out of it, the slopes are opposite reciprocals. So I'm gonna get an example of that. If one slope is negative two thirds, that means the opposite reciprocal is positive 3 halves. One will be positive, one will be negative, and then you're going to flip the fraction because it is an opposite reciprocal. In some textbooks, they'll talk about how the slopes multiply to be negative 1, but all we need to be concerned with is that the slopes are opposite reciprocals. All right, our last term is steeper. When something is steeper, it is more vertical than, you know, it's comparing two lines or three or something like that. But it is going to have the larger absolute value um, for slope. And so we're just going to say it's the larger value regardless of sign. So the fact that it's positive or negative does not affect which value is steeper. All right. So tell whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither state which line is steeper if possible. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find the slope of line 1, and then you need to find the slope of line 2, and then you can do the comparing part. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and find the slope of the two lines, and then check back. I'm going to record quick. All right, so as you can see here for line one, we got the slope was negative three halves. For line two, you got two thirds. We ask, are they parallel? Are they the same slope? No. Are they perpendicular? Are they opposite reciprocals? Yes. So we're going to say that they are perpendicular. And you can abbreviate perpendicular with just writing perp if you want, if you want to write it all out, by all means. And then the last question is, which line is steeper? So convert each of these to a decimal if you need to. Here you get negative 1.5. Here you get 0.67. Which one is bigger? If you said negative 1.5, again, we don't care about the sign. So I'm looking at 1.5 versus 0.67. So we will say line 1 is steeper. All right, I'd like you to do the same thing with lines three and four. So pause the video and do the whole problem. Find the slopes, compare them, and figure out which line is steeper. All right, so I found that line three had a slope of negative five-thirds, and line four had a slope of negative five-thirds. So that means they are parallel because they are the same. And since they are parallel lines, we do not compare steeper. So you can just say neither is steeper or, you know, and that's why it says tell which line is steeper if possible, if they're parallel, neither one. All right, which line is the steepest of all? So I'm going to go and find that these ones are negative 1.67. So if I go back and look at negative 1.67 is bigger than negative 1.5. So line 3 slash 4 or lines 3 and 4 are steeper than lines 1 and 2. All 
All right, and our last problem in this section. A building code requires that the minimum slope or pitch of an asphalt shingle roof to be 3 to 12. I know it's not reduced, but this is kind of how things work sometimes. Which means 3 foot of rise for every 12 feet of run. The diagram shows the cross section of a designed apartment building. What is the slope of the roof? If you said 15 over 80, unfortunately you are incorrect. Yes, it does have a rise of 15 feet. But if I think about it, the slope, there is one slope, there's one side. So yes, the rise is 15, but how far is the run? Well, if this whole thing is 80 and these hash marks mean it's the same, that would mean each of those sides are 40, which means the run on that would be 40 feet. And again, I use my units because they cancel, and then I reduce that to be 5 eighths. So that would be the slope of the roof. All right, so the last question is, does this roof meet building code? So it says in order to meet code, it has to have a 312, which we say, okay, 3 over 12 equal and reduce that, and I'm going to convert that to a 0.25. And go, does this building meet code? Is this slope steeper than 0.25? So take 5 divided by 8, and you get 0.375. So does it meet code? Yes, 3 eighths is greater than or equal to 1 fourth, which again, 0 0.375, 0 0.25. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you reach out. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.